Welcome to Intune Training with Johannes, Sean, and Jake the Dog Hunter. Jake, what's going on? Not a whole lot, Neil. Well, I'm still wearing the same clothes since last week. Oh, yeah, I just got back from duck hunting myself. <laughs> I at least changed my clothes, Johannes. <laughs> In all seriousness, what are we talking about today? Today? More graph yeah, stuff today. on how to, what, create a user and how to chain, make changes to the user's properties. That sounds I mean, like just name. Continuing our theme from the last few weeks, can we still do that with Graph Explorer? Absolutely. I think that's where we're going to stick around for the next couple episodes, at least. I like it. Cool. Let's switch over, uh, see what it looks like uh, from the Graph Explorer side of things. Um, so obviously, we should be all very familiar with Graph Explorer at this point. Um, in this particular case, though, we're going to scroll down and look at some of the example queries under user. And specifically, we're going to look at a post method for creating a user. By clicking on that, you're going to notice it's going to pre-fill a lot of information in for us with some pretty, you know, example data. Um, this is also a lot of data that we'd have to fill in. Do you know if this is all required, guys? Yeah, it's kind of interesting that you should ask that question. So I, I see you've got another tab open there as though we thought about this in advance. So this is a great time to actually sit here and talk about uh, what, what we have available inside of the Microsoft Docs. So that gave us all of the different fields that we could create. And I don't know if it's quite everything we could use when creating a user, but it's a lot more than what we typically need. If we come over here to the, the Docs for creating a new user, we can see there's a lot fewer parameters that we actually need. Um, and just one thing to kind of call out while you're on this page, because it's convenient. So here you're on the, the PowerShell tab, Go ahead and click over to the HTTP request, which would be a direct call. If you'll notice, the actual parameters almost didn't change at all. So if anybody's sitting here saying, should I be using the PowerShell module or should I be using you know, invoke REST method or something, I just kind of want to call out that the format really doesn't change. So the parameters that you're adding in a splat in PowerShell are pretty much the same as what we're adding here. Awesome. Let's pop back over to Graph Explorer for now. Um, I mean, I'm personally fine with using what's already here um, since we're not doing any crazy bulk updates or anything like that. Um, but looks like we're trying to add a, a Melissa Dero, uh, who's a marketing director. We could definitely use someone from marketing on our team here, I think. <laughs> yes. Uh, but with that, I mean, we'll go ahead and just hit run query because uh, most of the data in here, you know, it's it's a test user. We're not really pretty good. Yeah. So we'll just run that. Oh, and we got a bad request. Oh, so, oh. Principal property name is invalid. So let's take a look at the uh, user principal name. Yeah, I've got to guess that it's incorrect. Well, you know, it, it's not. Oh, look at that. Training. It's you just a placeholder. Bad domain. You guys don't own domain as a domain? We don't, no. Uh, we do more of like a contoso .loc. Um But let's try running a query again. After Oh, yep. we have a success. Ooh, good. Yeah. So definitely something to watch out for is some of that filler data options there. Now, obviously, you're not going to most likely be coming in here and doing this in production. Um, but in a test environment, you know, it's okay to make mistakes here and there. Absolutely. Could you open up the uh, Azure AD portal real quick? Yeah. Play some elevator hold music. Yes. I'm assuming you want me to go to users, correct? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Let's no. See. We just wanted you to open the Azure portal so that we could <laughs> dance for you. Verify that we own domain. Yeah. And what was the username? You know, it's it's been... Two Melissa old. Darrow. Melissa yeah. Darrow. Yeah. Ooh, there she is. Oh. Awesome. This is going to come in handy when we update her. Oh, looks like they changed the look of the uh, portal, too. I think you would have to go on the properties tab to see. No, oh, oh, yeah. in, in, the yeah. middle, in the middle. Right yep. in the middle. There. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. That's new. 
I like the new format. A little bit That's more. Yeah. That. I like it. Interesting. It's really kind of interesting because there are a few things that got set in there. And I like seeing that password policies, we can see that disable password expiration, which was set. Um, interesting stuff. Yeah, that is very interesting. But obviously not just creating users, but sometimes updating specific users is another, you know, key point that you'll probably have to make at some point, you know, someone gets a new job title, they move to a different department, different things like that. Um, we do have an example here for updating a user where we use the patch method. Now, I have a quick question for you, Jake. Um, that updates one uh, property. What if I want to change a whole bunch of properties? Two or three or four. Uh, can so I more than just like department. Yeah. Is what we're yeah. Doing a comma is your best friend. Comma, type in the property value that we want to change. Uh, maybe like display okay. name is an option. And then you can set it to whatever you'd like it to be. Now, in this case, we're probably going to edit my user. So I don't want to necessarily edit that. But I'll happily join the sales and marketing team. I think that includes a pay raise uh, yeah. for being the executive yeah. assistant. So we'll probably want to do that. But like when we're looking just at the request body here, all we see is department sales and marketing. We kind of need to target a specific user here. Um, and if we look up at the top here, yeah. we see it's just users slash ID. Does anyone really know yeah, what the I, ID I is? I believe you can either use the ID or the user principal name. And actually, both of those will work in this instance. So, yeah. for example, we can see if we wanted to update Melissa real quick, just to show this off, why don't you grab Melissa's ID down here and paste that in there? And let's change her department, or what do we see on the screen here? Let's go Thank ahead you. and change her job title to Jake's boss. That works for me. For the ID itself, are we keeping brackets, getting rid of brackets? We can get rid of those brackets. And I think I forgot to copy the ones. So we'll do that. Mm -hmm. And we're going to change this to Jake's boss. Yeah. Uh, except let's change the job title specifically. Job title. Gotcha. Yeah. Don't forget your quotes. I think that looks correct. Yeah. That looks good to me. Okay. Well, let's hit run a query, see what happens. We and got me. So this is really interesting. I don't know if you noticed before, the response type we had was a 201, which is a successful post request with content. A 204 response is a successful response with no content. So that's what we see here is we've got no specific response. So if we were to go ahead and get that user object again, so actually, yeah, you can just change that to get at this point. Makes it real easy. Ooh, there, there she go. is. Johannes' <laughs> boss. <laughs> but what if you go to the Azure portal, just to refresh that? Let's see if that shows up there right away. Also, for for, the, for our keen viewers, notice that the user ID and the URL bar, the address bar, is the same as in the graph. Got to figure out. Oh, here we go. Job there time. we go. Johannes is boss. We did a thing. Awesome. We did a thing. So now, can we do that by user principal name? What if we don't want to have to look you up, Johannes? Or Jake, rather. Do my account this time around. Uh, and I also think I like that job title as well. I think that fits. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go ahead and run that query too. Yeah. By UPN. Um, and this time we got a response, but we yeah. actually got some data back. It's because we actually are still on the get request at the top. Oh, yes. And of course. Look at that. This is why we, we need you here, Sean. This is why I make the, uh, the big bucks. Big bucks, yes. We'll go ahead and run query there. There we go. Now we've got hey, look at that. Content. So if we go again... It's going to be the same exact story. We'll see Johannes' boss listed. Or, again, I'm just going to go back here and change this to a get. And we should see that. So hey, Bishop look Johannes, at that. Hey, look at that. Now I have two Just bosses. a quick rundown on how we can quickly create a user and then patch a user as we see fit. Again, 
any questions, comments, concerns, throw them down below. Uh, stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching. Thanks, everyone.